What you guys got another video after 30 years Linux has finally hit 4% market share if we look at stat counter here and look at the statistics on there it tells us in June 2024 there was 4.5% of users using Linux in May it was 3.77% and in April it was 3.88% and in March, it was actually 4.5% again in March. So it's been fluctuating a little bit, but it has hit 4.5%. February was 4.3% and January 2024 was 3.7%. And you can see here, it fluctuates up and down. So when you go all the way back, and if you keep looking back here, you can see that it goes down to 2.9% in October 2023. And, and so on. This has been a regular thing that Linux goes through. It goes up and down where people try it out and then they leave the platform and go back to Windows because there's a lot of people that do use Windows. But these stats are not 100% accurate. As you can see here, this is another stat counter from netmarketshare.com and you can see they're only giving it 1.9% of users that are using Linux. And that's not to say that Chrome OS or Unknown are not partly Linux as well, but they are just talking about Linux here in this uh, stat. Because if you look at the stat counter there, there was a lot more using Unknown and also um, Chrome OS. But we're not going to count those as their main figure. So what does that mean for Linux? If it's true and there's over 4% of people using Linux now, that means there's going to be millions more people using Linux operating systems as of today, July 2024. So that's quite impressive. And I can see a lot of people that are stuck on a really old system which doesn't meet the Windows 11 system requirements and they're forced to uh, look for alternatives. And some people just don't have the money to upgrade to a new computer. And some people are sick and tired of Microsoft's failed offerings with Windows 11 and also failed updates and loads of other nasty stuff like Recall, which they've shelved for a little while, and also Copilot. Not everyone's happy with that. And this is the thing. A lot of people have already uh, tried Linux and are happy using Linux. Now, it's not to say that everyone is going to be able to make that transition over to Linux because some people just won't like it and they will come straight back. And this is why you see a lot of fluctuation in the market share with Linux. Now, either all of the trolling that these Linux users have been doing in the comment section of Windows channels by saying just install Linux has worked and they've now got a million odd people to use Linux all of a sudden, or it's just the fact that people are jumping ship to Linux because they have a holder system that's not compatible for Windows 11 and they just haven't got the money to shell out on a new computer so they are now trying Linux for the very first time. Now, for a lot of light users, I would say Linux will work OK. If you're going to be just looking at YouTube, doing a few emails and surfing the web and doing a few basic stuff like that, and you've had Windows for all these years, then Linux will probably be a breeze for you to be able to use on a daily basis. Now, a power user like myself who uses Windows very heavily and relies on a lot of different software and a lot of other different games and things like that, I really struggle with Linux on a daily basis to use it as my main daily driver. I just can't do it, and I've tried it many times. Now, I can use Linux for a lot of different things, but I just can't use it for a majority of the stuff that I do. And there's a lot of people that come under the same umbrella. They can't play certain games because Linux just does not play them, uh, and it's to do with the anti-cheat or whatever reasons that it is that it doesn't work and they want to play that game. Or it's something else like they need certain software and it just doesn't work with Linux whatsoever. And that's a big problem for a lot of people. So there are some of the reasons why people just can't adapt to Linux like some other people can who are very light users of an operating system who just do a bit of YouTube and a bit of email and Linux seems to work for them. But unfortunately, if you're in that boat where you need certain proprietary sort of software to work and it just doesn't work on Linux, then Linux is simply not for you. Now, Linux tries its best to offer other programs in replace of, say, Adobe Suite. Like, for instance, GIMP 
compared to Photoshop, but it's just not up to snuff and it's just not as good as Photoshop and it's not an industry standard. So people are just not going to be hiring people that are experts in GIMP. They are looking for people that are trained in certain other software, which is what's classed as the industry standard for businesses who use, you know, Adobe products and other software which is used on a daily basis, which just doesn't work on Linux. Now, apparently these statistics are calculated via the browser, which means if you're on a Linux based system and you're using your browser, it will class as a, you know, Linux operating system and obviously add that to the total. Now, I'm not 100% convinced that it is really 100% accurate, but those increases are still pretty impressive for Linux desktop operating systems. So is it going to surpass Windows anytime soon? No, I don't think Microsoft are going to be worried about those statistics. But if those uh, statistics are correct and over 4% of people are now using a Linux desktop operating system, then Linux users should be very happy because that is a huge increase compared to where it was previously. So think of this scenario. In October 2025, uh, Windows 10 will reach its end of life. Now, Microsoft haven't fully released all the information about the paid security updates that are being offered. And this will be the first time if they offer it to home users because it's only ever been offered to businesses. So if they do do it, it's going to be for the very first time offered to home users to be able to purchase security updates. Now, another thing to bear in mind is if your computer is not compatible for an upgrade to Windows 11, then your only other option is to either buy a new computer or you can use another operating system like Linux. And I can see a few more people jumping over to Linux because they might not have the money and they may have a, a pretty old computer and they may want to give Linux a try. So you could see that percentage grow even higher in the future. Now, don't expect to see like a 10 or 20 percent increase in usage for Linux users but I could expect to see at least a 0.5 or 1% increase of users using Linux. But how long for? I really don't know. But it could climb a little bit higher than what it is right now. So what does Linux have to offer? Well, it's free for one. It's also lightweight and it's customizable. Also, it doesn't come with all the corporate bloatware like Windows does. Another thing is its user privacy is very good. It doesn't harvest any sort of data like Microsoft does. And that is a real big plus. Now, it's not to say that Linux doesn't collect data because it does collect basic data and telemetry, but you can opt out of this. Also, I just want to point out that you ain't going to have to go in and turn off a bunch of features like you do in Windows and spend hours upon hours turning things off and tweaking it just to turn off all of the stuff that you don't need. So if you've got an aging computer that is not compatible for Windows 11, then maybe give Linux a go and see whether you can adapt to it and use it. You've got nothing to lose. It is free and you can always put it onto a virtual machine to try it out first. And if you like it, you can install it on your main system. Anyway, but that said, I think that's going to be about it. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. I shall catch you in the next video. Bye for now.